Hello everyone and welcome to this very, very, very interesting video because it was requested and it's manual versus automatic. Is automatic really that bad? Well, this video should hopefully tell you the answer because we have Drag Trail Seaside in Daily Race B and the Supra is the dominant car there. Now with the Supra, you do short shift it for optimum power. There are some gear changes mid-corner in the top ranked players, so it shows some gear abuse to get a little extra rotation. Gear abuse is fine, by the way. It's just something that you can't do in automatic because obviously the game selects the gear for you. So in theory, automatic should be pretty bad here, to be honest with you. It should be pretty bad. Question is, is it? Well, let's find out then. Let's jump to our laps. We're going to have a look at my side-by-side -side laps. I did 11 laps on uh, the manual setting. I did 11 on automatic. Automatic was the second run, so obviously expect that to be a little bit quicker than normal anyway. We'll discuss what I found in that uh, settings. We'll then have a look at the rank 1 player and how they use the gears to their advantage and whether you really should care about that or not. Uh, and then we're also going to look at any other advantages or disadvantage to each setting, whether it's manual or automatic. Let's then jump to the laps. I'm going to put them side by side so you can see them. And you can see the different sort of gears that we're in through the corners. And we're going to use the fastest lap from both of those sessions that we did. Here we are then. Uh, we go on to the laps. So as I say, left is manual. You can see that with the MT. And right is automatic. I have no idea why the lighting is different, by the way. But you can see we've short shifted on the left. And we do carry a little bit more speed there as we head towards turn one. You can see the difference there. 158 versus 157. So there's a disadvantage automatic okay you can't actually shift where the car should shift basically the game is revving the car we shouldn't be revving in this situation as we get to the apex though you can see a very different gear selection here i've gone for second in the daily race guide i said keep it in third as well here um so the game is keeping it in third um not because i said that of course but um it's decided that's the best case and in reality here we actually get a better better corner with the automatic so it's not doing too shabby to be honest with you uh, it's actually ahead of the manual car then you can see that with the speed increase at the end end of the exit curb there so obviously we were one mile now up on the automatic and then as we head hit to here we are a little bit quicker now on the manual so you can see the disadvantage there to automatic already you know it's not getting the best out of the car in terms of speed because it's using all the res rather than short shifting where we need to. I'm just going to slow this down and just look at how good the gear changes here. They both shift at the same time down to second. So automatic doing fairly okay there. Now you can see a little bit of a wobble on the uh, the exit with the uh, automatic and that's all to do with uh, just the shift of weight and potentially not expecting the gear change where if you do it yourself you would do expect that. We're through here, you're going to see a difference there uh, as well. So fourth gear was much uh, held for much longer with the automatic than it was with the manual. But it did actually help with turning. I was finding actually I was getting less understeer with automatic, which is pretty weird. Brake balance was the same uh, and everything. Uh, and as we come to here, you can see once again, manual slightly ahead in terms of miles an hour. Um, so we, we know that's a disadvantage now. Uh, we won't keep looking at that. But as we head in towards the corner here, you can see I've dropped a second gear much earlier with a manual and the automatic's delaying that we saw that earlier on where it was keeping third gear for the first turn and you can see that's had an impact because in terms of slowing down we've able to slow down quicker with engine braking with manual than we did with automatic and again we can uh, short shift with the uh, manual there as well uh, as we continue on through and uh, you can see the sectors are very similar in the grand scheme of it so you know the as i said i, I don't know why but i was experiencing less understeer on automatic i have no idea why it just felt that way uh, as we now we've lined the clips up as we head towards the last corner so we're going to see what happens here again we're going to slow it down so as we come into the braking zone we're breaking about the same point here uh, and you can see we're shifting down and we've shifted to second on there and a delayed shift on the automatic so uh, what that meant was a little bit of running wide on the automatic than it was on the manual and as we leave that corner the uh, manual is a little bit further ahead. So some interesting findings there. Obviously, this is what you sort of expected, I imagine, in terms of manual and automatic with manual having the ability to, you know, choose your own gear, really abuse the power band of the car. But what is the surprise here is the time difference. So you can see how fast the slaps here. 35.8 apiece. And I believe I could get the automatic into a top 10 time in EMEA. I really do believe I can do that. Um, and you can see the optimums as well. They're not far off each other. They really aren't that far off each other. Set to three, we saw where the disadvantage was. Set to two, you can see the difference. And then set to one, we're actually faster in automatic. So there's not a huge 
difference there between manual and automatic in terms of times. So while there are some disadvantages, should you worry about them? And I would say, no. I actually believe if you are comfortable with automatic, just stay with automatic for now. Now, in terms of racing, there are some disadvantages there. We'll talk about them in a second. But you saw there the times are very similar. We did the exact same experiment there. Now, automatic, I was expected to be a little bit quicker than I would have been because I'm obviously on lap 20, whatever it was at that point. But even so, even so, automatic is not that far off. And as I say, I believe I can get that into a top 10 star if I just put a little bit of effort in and, and, and you know, carried on with that. Now, as you have more corners and braking zones on a circuit, that difference may increase. As we saw, the, the automatic was just shifting down a little bit too late into second gear where we we're actually going to be using second gear. But in the daily race guide, I did say keep it in third. So, it's, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. And I think if you are struggling for times, worrying about gears actually is something you can avoid doing. You really can do it. Right, so let's now go to some more disadvantages of automatic um, obviously this is just a bit of information some very obvious stuff here so we're going to jump to the rank one currently which is haku hello haku and uh, we're going to see what haku does into the corner now you can't do this on automatic drops down to second gear uh, up straight up to third very quickly and then look at that straight down to second and into third now i don't know if that was a mistake or not uh, that's a very quick change it could be just to get the tiniest of rotation on the car but you can't do that in automatic you are very well aware of that you can see the short shift as well with the power Great to hear then. Once again, we're going to slow it down. Down to second gear. And then down to first. And then it's going to be up to second again. So you can't do this. But if you're asking whether, or should I stay on automatic or not? You're probably not worrying about this. And probably not caring about this, to be honest with you. Because this is like high-end driving technique for Gran Turismo. And you don't really need to know that if you're half a second, a second off the pace. This is just fine-tuning a lap to reduce that understeer, uh, get the car a little bit more rotated or, or, or potentially even slow down as well because you can do that to slow the car down as we come down to this final corner here. Drops to second gear. Oh, and first and then straight up to second there and then up to third. Now, the other disadvantage with uh, automatic is fuel saving. You can't do it. So you can see I short shifted there already. I'm going to short shift again in the Shiraco here. Very much below where the game would actually uh, change gear for you. Uh, and because it will always try and rev the car out, it's actually really bad for tyre saving as well. Because you're constantly revving the car. So obviously if you're trying to tyre save, potentially you might keep it in a higher gear in some corners. Just to avoid the gear change. Because as we've shown in the past in the driving school, that when you change gear, traction control is literally uh it goes on for a brief second and then goes off again now if when you change gear with traction control on um that's happening that means there's going to be some form of wheel spin or something happening to those tires so if automatic is changing gear for you and changing where you don't really want to change you could be causing yourself more tire wear and as i say if you want to fuel save you definitely can't use automatic because as you're seeing here there's a lot of short shifting going on and we saw that with the power band in the Supra. But here we're just trying to save fuel. And you can't do that very well with automatic. So they, they are literally the disadvantages. You can't abuse gears. You can't fuel save as well. And you can't tyre save as well. They're the only disadvantages to automatic. Oh, and uh, also you can't actually get the peak power band where you may necessarily need it. Like we did with the Supra where we had the short shift to actually get the most speed out of the car. Otherwise, you're pretty golden to be honest with you. Uh, you know, you can use it. And as I say, if you are very much way, way, way off the pace, potentially I would say go with automatic. Just try and focus on the car's um, movement and control and acceleration and braking and focus on those aspects first. But you've seen here in this video, automatic can compete with manual. Just in some situations like this situation right here, it does struggle with the fuel saving and tire saving. So that's going to be it for this video. A short video for you, but hopefully an interesting one all the same. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do give it a like as always. And uh, if you want to stay in touch with all the content that's coming out this week, make sure you, you subscribe as well. That's going to be it for me now, folks. Au revoir and farewell.